Okay. The home, the structure, faces north. And we've got some high soil and negative drainage along this east wall. This is the closed dryer vent. Probably should be clean. Over here we have a dog door that was installed in the wall. If you don't have a dog, that's a hole. And we got some separation between the dog door frame. Lawns, and this is going to be a long one, so buckle up, hang on. Lawn sprinkler head should not be closer to a structure than 12 inches. The screens are not spring chickens. Uh, so far we've got one torn screen. Coming along here, these, this is uh, kind of unusual. This is going to make the termite report, all the report. Actually, we got high soil here. But we've got boards underneath the AstroTurf. Boards under here. So that we can make the seams. I get that. But you know, termites are going to love that. They just are. And it's a termite baby. I don't know what else to call it. Okay. Moving on along. This is the water heater, temperature pressure, leak valve, drain line. And I don't see a secondary drain line, so I'm assuming that we don't have a pan. And uh, we got some wood rot on this horizontal trim along here. We got horizontal trim around a lot of the structure. A lot of it. Here's some more right over here. This wood rot right over this board. Okay. These trim boards, this siding was not installed with these trim boards. That's atypical to this, this installation. So it's reasonable to assume that there's wood damage behind this. That was that was put there to cover something up. And we, also, welcome to the neighborhood, but we've got traps. This one doesn't look like it's ever been used. Okay. We've got other traps. You can't really see up there very well, but you know, you got trees, you got bushes. We're coming on along. We're at the back of the house now, we're at the south side of the house. There's the gas meter. It's high enough off the ground. It's in the alley outside of the fence, east side. This is how you would turn it off, right here. More of the vertical trim board that I'm, I'm talking about. Rain gutters should divert water farther away from the structure. That being said, if you brought a rain gutter spout, drains spout 10 feet out, then you'd be tripping over it, mowing over it. I don't really know what the answer to that question is. That's the million dollar question. Uh, we've got a metal door, aluminum overhead door for the cars. This top panel, last panel, and this is the first panel. Same way with shingles and bricks. Second, third, you know, the top, top panel. It doesn't fit flush next to the stop here. The casement stop. A little bit of a gap there. Electric power to the house, below grade. These three sides, top and both sides, should have been sealed to help prevent moisture infiltration into the structure. This is about the swimming pool here. But this fence is installed inside out. These exposed rails, the old top rail, these rails make impromptu ladders. And then somebody's trying to mitigate this. So you got the little slant jobber on there. I get it. They tried to mitigate it, but that is what it is. Now this form board, border if you will, retainer. Um, but we got wood rot in here. Sure it is. It's close to the house. Wood mulch and bushes next to the house. Wood mulch and bushes next to the house, next to the house, next to the house. Soffit vents. I don't know if I called that to everybody's attention yet. Soffit vents. Trees too close to the house. A tree should not be closer than 25 feet to the house. I know you want a tree here. It's cute. Look at that. There's no reason why you wouldn't want it except 
the roots will grow into the foundation and the branches will grow onto your roof. Those are reasons. And speaking of roof, more of the vertical trim board. Uh, but down here, two things are going on. We should have kick out flashing right there. And the rain gutter should not butt in, should not uh, you know, snug up next to the wall like that. All right, that's not supposed to do that. Over here, and you see a drill hole like this. There's some more. There's only one reason for that drill hole. Is somebody was applying product. That's code for poison. For poison. So what's happened is the only poison that you would apply that way is for subterranean termites. So we know, so far, haven't been inside yet, we know this structure has been treated at least once for subterranean termites. We don't know who treated it, we don't know when it was treated, and we do not know what it was treated with. This fountain, that would be conducive. This electric receptacle outlet, it should have an in-use cover. Uh, bubble cover, call it what you will, so that way you can plug something in and close it. As it is, that's a weather tight cover until you plug something in, and you can't leave anything, you know, plugged in without compromising the weather cover. We'll come back. And uh, revisit the swimming pool, re revisit all this. Probably should have done all this. Oh, I'm missing a screen. Coming on along, swimming pool equipment, all to be revisited. Storage, lots of storage. We'll have a separate swimming pool video. I should have done all this back here with this one pull video but I got you now I got you now you're my you're my victim while we're walking I always like at some point to say thank you very much for trusting me and using me as your inspector I certainly do appreciate this um, if you've got any questions about your home inspection for you, then uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I just about answer my phone anytime. And if I don't, I'll get back to you. Okay, we're back to the wall. Obviously the exterior walls have been painted. Windows sealed. Unlike the electric meter, this has actually been sealed on three sides. This is the disconnect for the condensing unit. Unfortunately, it's located behind the condensing unit. It's not supposed to be located behind the condensing unit. There's all the wires fit together. Oh, there we go. All right. I'll leave this off. I'll get a still image of that. I got a. I didn't get such a good image earlier. The piping's insulated. The right kind of caps on the refrigerant ports. Here's your data plate. It says that it now Linux has gotten cute, so I'm gonna to have to look this up to find out what size this is. But the serial number tells me that it's one year old. The serial number tells me that it's between 30 and 50 um, uh, amp circuits capabilities requirements. It says it's 410A, which we expected that it's one year old. That's nice, but what we don't have here, we do not have a rain diverter over the condensing unit, so water could just crash down on this new condensing unit and make it old real fast. We've got some cracks between, oh, keep on the air conditioning. That's your secondary drain line. Okay, so we know that the indoor air handler is going to be in the attic. Probably another long video. And um, this has been leaking. See all that rust? So I got tired of looking at that. This tells you that you got a problem. All right? So when they added this extension on it, that way they didn't have to look at the water dripping down. They could ignore the problem. Well, the reason this is leaking is because the primary line was clogged. Or one of the reasons. And just like the primary line gets clogged, 
so does the secondary drain line. If you, that's not addressed, then it's going to come through your ceiling. Got lots of brick repair here. Lots of brick repair going through. So this is between, that's what I say between my code words. I say through, through there. All right, got some more cracks forming as we speak. So this is an ongoing issue. I think there's been some foundation repair on this house. I'm not sure. I seem to remember somebody saying something about an engineer's report. I'm not sure. Cracks, cracks, cracks. These are these are called stretcher bricks because they stretch out. Some people call them dog's tooth. These are your regular brick work. Moving around the front of the house now. We are wood mulch next to the house, bushes next to the house. Trees too close to the house. Let's see if I can get a good example here. I don't want a good example. I'm not getting one. Okay. Right, here's one. You know it's a post-tension slab house because you got an exposed post-tension end right there. Okay. Let me just back up. What am I not seeing? I'm not seeing weep holes. I haven't seen expansion control joints. And I'm not seeing weep holes. Okay, home ownership 101, all roofs leak, all walls leak. We expect them to shed water faster than they accept it. Wood mulch in the yard. So one of the ways that we mitigate this issue is we install weeps, little weep holes in the first course of the brick. I'm not seeing any. That was a revelation for me. And there should be over this lentil. Right over here, there should be weep holes. And there isn't. I already tripped the front. So we got any power on this one? This one's a little more, ah, it's a different one. The drip's all right. There we go. I'm looking, drill holes. They put a little rock in it. It's been treated, front and back, front and back.